So far we have been describing the chemical bond as three possible types. There were the covalent bonding, ionic bonding and metallic bonding depending on the kind of elements mixing um, when forming the compound. Uh, these are of course extreme situations when an atom is bound to another atom there's always some electrostatic interactions typically there is repulsion among the positive nuclei and there is also repulsion among the electrons belonging to each atom. However, so this means of course there will be this kind of repulsion when the nuclei, for example, they get too close or when the electrons they get too close. The two charges will repel. However, what drives the the chemical bond, the, uh, the attracting uh, interactions are the attraction among the electrons of one molecule of one atom and the nuclei of the other atoms and this as you well may remember uh, has an attraction potential so a chemical bond is nothing else but the the combination of the repulsion from here and the attraction from here so it's a balance. It's a trade-off between the repulsion and the attraction of nuclei and electron. So what is the result? The result is what we call the, the energy diagram of a bond in which it has a clear, a clear attraction zone in here, an attraction zone at the beginning. So two atoms, as you get them together, they'll start attracting until they reach a point, and that point it's right here, when the repulsion zone starts kicking in. So that point that is the most attractive but the repulsion starts has not started uh, kicking in or started increasing, that's what we call the bond distance. This is the bond distance. And the energy going from the, the deep of the well until, until zero energy, that's called the bond energy. So we will be using these kind of graphs because it will help us understand not only strength of the bond but also the bond distance so the bond this bond this distance here it's the distance between the two atoms that makes it optimal to maximize the attraction and minimize the repulsion okay uh, I can show you some applications that you, those of you who have taken or who are taking anatomy and physiology may be familiar with. You have been talking about uh, neuromuscular blocking drugs, and I'm, I, I know very well that depending on the, this kind of drug, it can be treatable with, with the, the poisoning can be treatable with, with a specific compound. What does it depend? if this drug is treatable or not. It strongly depends how the drug interacts with its target. In this case, when you have this uh, a large well, it means that it's a strong bond. When you have a strong bond, when your drug binds very strongly with its target, uh, we will say that the situation is irreversible, meaning that the drug it can cannot be easily be removed. That's a strong bond because the, the the depth of the well is very deep. However, if the drug does not bind so strongly, that is, the energy between the depth of the well and zero is not so large. This is a weaker bond, weaker bond, and the situation is reversible. So you can inhibit. The, the effect of the drug by treating it with, with some of these drugs. Okay, so these kind of plots should be applicable to many instances, but again it will tell us the strength of the bond and the distance of, of that bond. Let's, let's run a, a, simple, a simple case in which here, those of you who have taken organic chemistry, I'm asking you to draw in one single diagram the well, the energy curve for the carbon-carbon bond in ethane, ethene, and ethine here. So, in here we have the energy, and in here we have the distance among carbon-carbon. What do we know? We know that the higher the bond order, so if you have a triple bond, it'll be shorter, the bond will be shorter, and the, ener and the bond will be stronger. So it's safe to say that this compound will have the strongest and the shortest of the bonds and ethane 
will have the weakest and the longest of the bonds. So how does that look like in a graph? So if you plot like that, um, I will say that this is the bond distance for ethine and the next one, let's see, all should end up, this will be the bond distance for ethene, oops, there's two hydrogens, and finally, how do I do this, we are not looking to exaggerate it, oh, this one is not very good, the minimum should be here, so I'm going to do it something like that. Of course, it's, it's qualitative, but this third curve would be the carbon-carbon interaction for ethane. I apologize for how clogged this, this looks like. But of course, the, the, the more to the left the curve is, the shorter the bond is, and the deeper the well uh, or the curve, the stronger it will be.